gospel music, uh, I'll take the very familiar hymn, Amazing Grace. Um, gospel music is taken from blues, uh, from jazz. Now, gospel has been divided up into several different genres, such as traditional gospel, uh, even all the way to the other extreme as gospel jazz, which is a type of contemporary gospel, where gospel musicians, especially uh, those that deal with chords and comping pianists, and definitely on the Hammond B3 organ, uh, use a lot of styles and idioms and motifs from jazz music, uh, also from some pop music, and they incorporate it into a common hymn, uh, whether they're playing in a church on Sunday morning or doing a gospel brunch. So for example, with Amazing Grace, uh, very familiar, um, we'll start with the one chord. Six F minor, A flat, two five T five chord, back to the one chord, four chord, what you'll find out from traveling across the country, uh, in different regions of the country. Particularly uh, with pianists, there are different voicings, different chords are in the gospel music world. They'll say they're different sounds. Uh, and those sounds come from the influences of musicians like Richard Smallwood, whose gospel music style is very based in classical um, music, uh, Baroque in particular. Then you have uh, people that have contributed a lot to gospel piano, such as the late, great Reverend James Cleveland, where there are a lot of octaves like this, I'll do a little James Cleveland. a lot in Chicago. Uh, they have something where they tell the pianist to walk on the piano where you just bring the quarter note. Because in many churches uh, in gospel music, especially in the South, uh, churches didn't believe that you should have a drum set in church. So early gospel music, actually there was just a pianist, or in some churches there might have been the guitar player. Of course people would clap their hands, stomp their feet on the one, two, three, four, like that, and also Many times they would play a tambourine. But in the Pentecostal churches that were very charismatic, they had a drum set, so uh, rhythm was not necessarily required from the, the pianist by playing the bass in the left hand, because the organ player, the Hammond beat the organ in the Pentecostal churches, which is the main instrument, keyboard instrument, the Hammond organ, you would do a lot of comping. And a lot of jazz, blues, idioms in the style. So, for example, if I were to also maybe go to the area in the Midwest, in Detroit, where great keyboard players, and they have several YouTube clips of them, such as Thomas Whitfield or Elbernita Twinkie Clark, um, who was a uh, founding member of the Clark Sisters. Uh, you think about people like that, or Rudolph Stanfield, or even going out to the West Coast with Walter Hawkins, the Hawkins family, or Andre Crouch. Uh, gospel music in the late 80s, early 90s started changing where certain chords that were considered to be secular uh, out of their, based on their influence were coming into gospel music. So for example, it may sound something like this.
then, of course, uh, more uh, musicians, especially in gospel piano, begin to venture out and experiment with different uh, pianistic uh, risks. Uh, people like Kevin Bond, people like uh, Jason White uh, from California. Uh, musicians like this begin to add more uh, virtuosic playing on the piano where it wasn't so much rhythmic but it was more of a melodic uh, way of moving in the music. Now, this melodic movement, which you'll hear when I'm going to play this example of Amazing Grace this last time, it began to mimic what the vocal vocalists would do, the singers, with the melisma or the riff or the run. Where they do a run like instead of singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Singing very straight. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So out of the Clark sisters, uh, Church of God in Christ, singers begin to sing with more runs and melismas similar to uh, what a saxophone player would do in jazz music. So people like Kim Burrell as well, they begin to run, so the musicians begin to play more runs. Uh, for example, like this. into one lesson in one sitting, but gospel music really pulls from classical music, pulls from jazz. You'll hear swings sometimes, you'll hear blues. You'll hear pop idioms in gospel music. So to be a gospel musician nowadays, it requires you to have an understanding of music history from the whole scope of uh, Baroque music all the way down to things that you'd hear on the radio today even if you do the same song, Amazing Grace, like this. Oscar Peterson run. So, it just depends. Um, but there's so many different styles. Uh, of piano playing within gospel singing. There's so many different styles of singing which are considered to be correct for a certain region, whether it be from the southeastern region of America, uh, whether it be from the northeast region, from the DC Baltimore area where you'll find that singers and musicians definitely have a very uh, jazz, jazzy ear. Uh, some regions believe that you should, the sound should be more towards blues, with the blues runs, you know, pentatonic scale because they feel like that's being more uh, uh, correct, more uh, exact to what gospel music should be. Um, but there'll be more coming soon.